之前嗰個十五 percent 納税嗰個影響咧，令到好多，尤其是持貨多過一個物業嗰一啲嘅業主咧，其實佢哋都唔唔願意賣樓啊，個個都覺得賣咗賣唔翻啊嘛，即係揸樓好過揸錢，唔願意賣樓出現嘅情況就係咧，二手市場嗰個數量好少，就即係話。你買嘅人呢，就只能夠去追價，咁變咗就令到成個樓價呢，就夾硬焗住，好似係停咗一個高位，甚至乎係焗住要上咁樣。咁呢個係即係最致命嘅一樣嘢。新手要上車嘅話呢，其實而家呢刻係困難嘅。其實都等啲新手好慘，同埋即係佢哋好好陰公喺呢個喺呢個政策底下呢，佢哋係。焗住去俾好貴嘅價錢，甚至乎焗住去創新高。所以如果佢真係要上車嘅話咧，其實我覺得第一樣嘢咧就唔好心急先。每一個地區都其實嗰個形勢都唔同嘅，嗰一刻嘅形勢都唔同嘅。即如果你見到你自己嗰個小區係真係發生啲咁嘅事啦，啊真係冇人賣樓啦，真係要創新高先買到啦咁樣，你不如冷靜下，你會唔會遲啲先買呢？又或者會唔會去？隔離左右其他小區買咧，係咪一定要喺呢個小區度追呢？咁樣咁呢個衡量一下咯。最緊要諗下就係、是，當你買咗之後，咁你將來你有冇諗過賣出去呢？咁呢個價錢你買咗之後，你將來賣出去，你會唔會仲有仲有上升嘅空間呢？如果你嗰、那個你嗰個買翻嚟嗰個物業你係唔升嘅話，咁第時你點換樓呢？關於周期呢，其實個諗法已經係唔適用啦。我自己覺得就可能個現實根本就唔係樓價升，個現實可能就係根本上係銀紙貶值。你見到其他嘢都貴咗好多。由於就係政策啦，咁同埋嗰個貨幣嘅供應嘅影響咧，咁變咗其實要喺呢段時間咧，即係要再好似零八年咁樣嘅大跌咧，其實就即係唔容易嘅。咁所以咧，其實就如果有啲比較上。中小型嘅調整咧，我覺得就應該要把握機會嘅啦。一啲中小型嘅調整，例如咩呢？二零一三年咧出咗個三 D 辣椒，咁啊出咗三 D 辣椒之後咧，咁啊事實上嗰個樓價樓市咧係真係冷卻咗好多嘅。咁嗰次嘅辣椒咧，咁啊除咗一啲住宅啦之外咧，咁啊包括咗工商鋪市場咧，其實都靜咗一段好長嘅時間。嗰段時間係一個幾好嘅機會啦。一五年底咧，咁啊有大家都覺得世界樓炒得太貴啦，咁樣應該會有有專家就覺得係會爆煲啦，咁樣咁就真係爆喎嗰次係，咁所以大家就隨時做好準備啦，就唔好抱住個心態就啊會嚟緊會唔會再平啲啊咁樣，咁一定會嘅，咁一定會有人再平過你嘅，你冇可能係全宇宙最平嘅，所以如果有啲中小型嘅調整啊，咁啊例如話有一至兩成嘅平咗啊咁樣咧，咁其實咧就應該要把握機會嘅。Why do traders and investors fail in the market? It's a big question. All right, so yeah, so traders, investors, everyone's got different mentality, different psychology, but we can look at what the common reason is. You know, there's various statistics, but some people say 90% of people all fail, uh, fail in the markets, 10% are successful. But we also have to look at other industries as well. Don't just think about traders that are failing. Look at restaurants. Majority of restaurants don't make money. Yeah, if we look at some of the most successful restaurants, there are people that are already a chain or a franchise uh, following a formula. So many of the small startup independents find it very, very hard. So it's not just traders that have a high failure rate. If you look at a lot of a lot of businesses, start you know startup businesses, we're all like happy to hear about the successes, but of course many startup businesses fail. So it's not just trading. Um, but there is a, there is definitely a skew of obviously winners to losers, and obviously the winners are doing something differently to the losing traders. What are the biggest mistakes a trader should avoid when trading in the stock market? I think you know the biggest mistake is having a bias, i.e., thinking that um, it, the stock is always going to go up, or because then what happens is there's something in the brain which it will. If you, for instance, have a silver Porsche. And you, you've bought a new silver Porsche, and you're driving along in your silver Porsche. What do you see now? Other silver Porsches, yeah, because because now you're one of them. Your brain were those cars 
on the road before? Yes, they were. It's just that now you've tuned into that because now you're one of them as such. And this is what happens a lot with trading. People have a bias. So now they've bought gold and all of a sudden, anyone they hear to talk about gold up is their friend. Anyone that says gold's going to go down is an enemy. And this is what happens, you can get caught into this bias. And I think that's a big mistake traders make. Instead of again looking at the price, watching what's really happening, and admitting that you're wrong, you know, just admitting that this I've got this wrong. How do you manage risk? All right, so you know, this is a great question about risk and volatility. A lot of time people mix volatility. And if you go back and read uh, Warren Buffett, Berkshire Hathaway, they have letters. And you go to the website, they're all available free. And I believe it's in the 2015 letter, which is the one that's just gone out um, in, in 2016. And he talks about volatility and risk. And he writes a very, very sharp letter. Um, and they often get mixed up. So the, the thing what we look at with risk is what happens if this company, this stock, whatever, um, blows up tomorrow? What's the most I can lose? A lot of people are always looking at how much you can make, but take the view of how much you can lose. Is that really, really gonna hurt you? How much of that account is it gonna take away? So I think that's the most important thing. Also, don't mix up sort of short-term volatility as risk, because something can be volatile short-term, um, but it doesn't mean it's more risky. And in fact, sometimes um, the longer you hold an investment, the risk actually goes down. Do you monitor open trades all the time? Not all the time. I'm not the sort of person that is sitting there with a phone, watching apps and all the rest of it. But certainly once a day, I'll take a look. There's core positions. I'll give you an idea. Nestle I've held since 2001. I'm not worried about Nestle if it goes up or down today. They've had a few food scares along the way, um, but it's a stable, very, very slow and steady stock. Um, I've got no intention to sell that anytime soon. So, you know, I'll have very longer term holdings that I, I won't even worry about. Um, but on the whole, I'm not glued to a screen all day. What methods do you apply when your analysis or positioning is wrong? Okay, so this is where, again, technical analysis can help us, something like a moving averages or two moving averages crossing. Um, they can tell us, basically, you know, look, you're wrong because you bought it at one price. It's clearly not going the way that you thought. And, and when I'm, I've been talking so far about things going up, obviously I trade things to go down as well. So sometimes we actually want something to go down and it's not, it's going up. So we're wrong on that side as well. So using some sort of an exit, and that's the important thing. We've got an idea of where we, we're going to get out, whether we're right or whether we're wrong, you know, some sort of an exit point. So that's what I'm looking at. Um, but that's, that's the main reason that I'm using and that's where you know charts can help because it takes a bit of the emotion out of it as well. What if you've got a strong conviction about a trade but the price keeps moving against you? What do you do? Right, and that's the so that's the whole point in that you've got it wrong. And you've got to admit it back to what we said about being um, humble. You can have a great conviction. Now if you want to I hate to say boy but gamble if you want to risk five hundred dollars, a thousand pounds, whatever, on something, take a bit of a punt. Um, then fine, you know, by all means, you know, you've got a strong conviction, but take that as risk money. Don't put your, your big money into that. Um, and if you're right, great, but if you, you're wrong, then well, you know, it's fine. But for the majority of the time, we really should be following the price. So if you can be very convinced about something, you know, and I say, going back to some of the pharmaceuticals and biotech stocks, you've read the reports, you've seen what the management say, and you think, oh my gosh, you know, this is a wonder drug and all the rest of it, and it turns out basically it's water. Um, so you know, and then the price tells you what's going on. How do you determine if a trade has failed other than its performance after entry? I think performance at the end of the day, that, that's the, right. you know, it, that is the key. If, if it's worked, you know, money show, you know, the profit or the loss tells you really what happened. If you follow the system and you've had um, a false signal for some reason and it's lost a little bit of money, don't beat yourself up. You know, as long as you follow the rules, that's fine. Again, you can withstand lots of losing trades. Let's say, for instance, you lose £100 on six, seven trades, and then the two good trades make £500 each, you can still come out ahead, even though your win-to-lose ratio is really, really terrible. Um, so don't worry about 
having you know more losers than winners that doesn't matter but really it, it's yeah the outcome is tells you whether whether it's